Namaste. Today I'm sitting with my beautiful friend Jenny, again in India, North Goa this time. And um, the reason why I came first time to India is actually Jenny. Because we are really, really close friends since a long time. And when she started uh, leaving Germany and being in India, I was actually a little bit upset because I missed her obviously a lot. And India was never on my list, but I went there to see her and I also fell in love with India. And I'm really happy that Jenny is here to share with me her life story. Because she's a passionate yoga teacher since a long time. And her passion is acro yoga and yoga Thai massage. And since one and a half years, she has a beautiful daughter, Luna, which makes the Yomet lifestyle a little bit more challenging. She will tell Tiny you about that. <laughs> and um, yeah, Jenny, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, maybe first of all, I would like to introduce how I ended up in India. Yes. <laughs> um, it was like around uh, 2009 when I had a more or less a burnout uh, because I was trapped in that wheel of the Western society working uh, for a company and also I was a sports teacher so I just was burning my body all the time out. I loved my job kind of but I really didn't recognize that uh, it's just too much of work, too much of consumption and too much of uh, having fixed costs so you earn a lot but there's nothing left and I was like just tired all the time and I felt like I need to change something. As well as um, in my mind was, my mom raised me up a kind of spiritually because she's a yoga teacher almost since I'm born or since I'm 10 years, so since then I can remember. But I knew there is something more than just being in that working wheel and I was like, I was trying to find a way out. And that coincidence was like my, one of my best friends, Ralph, he uh, gave me a present, it was 2008 for Christmas, uh, for 10 days in India. And I thought at present, and first of all, I would never ever came to that idea to travel to India, but I was excited. I was like, okay, let's do that. And it was a backpacking trip, which what, that's what you usually do in India. <laughs> there are also some other uh, journeys you can do, but that's usually what you do in Asia. And he has done a lot of traveling and uh, three months Thailand and different kinds of things. And he wanted to show me maybe the other world. So I know March 2009 was the first time I arrived in India. And in Mumbai, after uh, no sleep in the plane, Mumbai was so loud, so dirty, I felt so tired. And my, I, I remember my feet were swollen because of the heat. It was my first time in a tropical climate. I was like, oh my God, I'm dying. <laughs> and I had to wait in Mumbai for one more day without a hotel because in the night time we booked a bus to go out. The bus drive was also horrible. So I was A little bit cold like, and bumpy. <laughs> yeah. And then we arrived in Goa and the whole scenery changed. Um, very from one minute to the other. So as soon as I arrived in Goa, I felt that comfort of the atmosphere and that slowing down in my own consciousness and in my own body, what I never really could reach in Germany because uh, maybe you have been in the Western world as well. <laughs> or you live there and you know how it is. Your mind is all the time busy and Goa has this magic that the mind can slow down. And I really enjoyed this travel. We also went to Kerala, and then after 10 days, which is very short for India, back to Germany. But uh, my mind couldn't cope anymore because I've seen the other side. Oh. So couldn't cope anymore with the society. I was still working, and I went one more time with the same friend to India. <laughs> it was the, the end of the same year, and uh, I always wanted to do a yoga teacher training to really uh, discover myself. Um, and be more in the spiritual world and discovering. So I decided, I'm in India now, so I have to do it in India. That would be the best place to do it. So um, I booked a teacher training in 2011. And I still had my flat, I still had my job. Um, I was usually not allowed to leave, but they didn't want to um, let me go. So I told them uh, the yoga teacher training and the yoga teacher will be very beneficial for you. So either let me go, or I will, uh, I will quit. Yeah, I will quit. Thank you for the word. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I enjoyed it so much that I not I was not returning back to Germany, <laughs> first of all. And I thought, oh, maybe they fire me. But then I came just one month late, and they were just happy. <laughs> and the funny thing is that after this experience, was was so intense, like when you do your first teacher training, it's the strongest education maybe you can do because you work with yourself. Um, and after one more month at work, I got a more or less a real burnout because it was just too much and uh, 
For one year I was really in my burnout, but still in Germany, first of all, I started to teach a little bit yoga, which was curing myself, but I always had this longing of uh, wanting to go back to India. So in my burnout, I went back to India, and this was more or less the point I never returned. <laughs> Since then, uh, usually living the season in Goa, and the first two, three years I was uh, very curious about other places in the world. So I was spending five months in Sri Lanka, which is also a super beautiful place. For me, not the same energy as in Goa, but super beautiful nature. And I went to Bali, which is also super beautiful. I spent uh, five months in Kenya and Africa. And anytime, or every time I came back to um, Germany, the first three, two years, I was not happy in Germany because I couldn't digest my own stories and maybe my own drama and my burnout. So. That needed almost five years that I felt like, okay, now I can return and I can see the Western world in another eye. Maybe even the beauty of the Western world. Yeah, I mean, Goa is so nice and because you slow down and you have uh, that, that, that calm mind. Um, but some things, especially when you start to work here, are not working very well. <laughs> which is the Wi-Fi, which is anything which has to do with work is really slow. I mean, you learn to be patient here. So that's the uh, one thing which is completely different from the Western world. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's the second time that we try to record a video because there are always some uh, things that disturb. Music, cows, you know. People who want to have money. <laughs> People who want to have money. <laughs> Back when it's like, yeah. uh, it's still uh, like that in India. But you learn to see so many things uh, in a different kind of uh, view and it just opens up your mind to be in uh, maybe to uh, societies or maybe in both societies, the Eastern and the Western world. And all the time I go back now to Germany and I teach yoga, I feel that I can, another, another noise, <coughs> I feel that I can bring something to the Western people because of my learning here. Mm. And how did Acro Yoga come into your life? <coughs> Acro Yoga, uh, I first, uh, ah, yeah, yeah, I first did in my first teacher training, was 2011. Um, and uh, a friend of mine who did the Acro Yoga teacher training with me, she just flew me. magic to be just up in the air and so light and flowy and I thought okay I need to do that. It took me two more years to do my first immersion and, and um, participating in education. Yeah but uh, since then I love it because it brings the people together with the yoga and just with myself on the mat and I'm mm -hmm. practicing my discipline and my breathing and my asanas and suddenly another part comes in in aqua yoga because you train the communication and as you're sometimes up in the air or basing either you train stability and trust or when you're up in the air you also have to create a lot of trust and to how do I talk to another person mm. and that's the that's the main key um, for me for aqua yoga and also I always liked sports because I was a sports teacher and a manager and in aqua yoga you have a kind of sports, but in a super, super playful way. Mm. And that makes it uh, light and interesting. And also when I came back to Germany always, I couldn't go anymore into the gym mm. because the people are standing in front of the mirror, everybody's not talking towards each other and uh, very strong energy. And the funny thing is, when I go back to Germany now, I can go in the gym because I'm not affected anymore. By it's a mindset. It's a mindset, yeah. So, so would you say it's the inside which is important rather than the external influence? Yeah, that's true. And I think uh, a lot of us we have to experience something that we can really see. And uh, I think as stronger as our experiences are and as more as we experience, and even though uh, what we know, go through the shadow or go through a deep experience, as more we can change our perspective later. And then also we realize, of course, there's nothing out of us. Everything is just inside. But um, even though I knew and I was raised up spiritually, I have to experience everything by myself. Yeah. It's, it's not coming uh, from theoretical knowledge. Mm -hmm. That's that's interesting because that is how you start. You start to read books and you're like, okay, yeah, oh yeah, no, I can. I resonate with that book. But then the next step is just to experience what mm. what you have to experience. Um, and this is also what I like about teaching or also yoga teachers teach what you have experienced by yourself and talk about what you have experienced by yourself because then it's authentic. Yes. Yeah. It comes. Yeah, so for <coughs> sure your teaching is a mirror of your practice and I don't mean the practice on the mat, I mean the practice, the yoga practice, your life, your daily life, the, the challenges we all have, the ups and the downs. 
And uh, yeah, you want to tell us a little bit about your ups and downs, maybe? Mm, yes, of course. I just have to think. <laughs> I mean, a it, lot it, of ups and downs. A actually. pretty good up is Luna, I guess. <laughs> a pretty good up is Luna. Um, for me, a kind of a, a, a up and a down was maybe uh, that I was. Uh, I needed one or two. Uh, I think about two years to really release everything in Germany. And with releasing everything, I mean, you sell your flat, you sell your car, you don't have any clothes anymore. It's a kind of a cleansing process. But at the same time, it's scary because you have no stability anymore, no security anymore. I mean, this is really not existing. It's just existing in our minds. But uh, still, it's a, it's a kind of a process. Um, I'm a kind of a adventure person, so that part was not too strong for me but still I had to go through that and also uh, while I was traveling I always was just a bit working sometimes not that much working because you don't need a lot of money here but I also came to that part where I the, the season was over and I had a bad experience with teacher training I didn't get paid so it was March the season is over and I didn't even have money to go back to Germany I was like, okay just what you have to do, you have to trust. <laughs> and always, of course, when you when you let go, something is coming to me, or to you, to everybody. So a friend of mine uh, just offered me to go to uh, Kenya, and I was working there. And I had uh, the same scenario one year later, <laughs> where I just like, okay, go to Delhi and try to work. <laughs> so I went to Delhi and. April and, Mar uh, April and May are the most hottest months you can you can ever have. Almost the uh, the floor is melting sometimes <laughs> because it's almost 50 degrees. It's half there that it's very dry, and I thought, oh my God, I will not survive in this crazy city. First of all, I was fighting against it. Then I was letting go, and I met a beautiful woman who owned a yoga teacher and who had just rich clients and as I'm a time masseur I was massaging their clients and I think in one week I made thousand euros it was like okay so solution resolved and as soon as I had the money in the hand I flew back to Germany and it was also the first time I appreciated rain and cold and all this just cleanliness and taking a shower so uh, yeah, because of this experience, uh, I see now always both sides. I think Jenny is a really, really good example that uh, trusting the process and accepting it, that is uh, really important. It always sounds and looks really nice. We live at the beach, we have a lot of sun. Um, it's not only that. There are struggles we all went through. Um, but the, the nice thing is that what Jenny is saying, the yin and the yang, now we have both lives, we know the eastern and the western world, and you, you see the beauty in both of them, and you can combine it and use it for yourself as you need it or want it. Yeah, another plus point is that uh, when it's very, very sunny, when the weather is tropical, the people are happier. And the special thing in Goa is, or maybe even the Asian world, that the people are poor, poor, <laughs> but uh, they, they don't mind. It's like they're, they're smiling and yeah, maybe you don't find that so much in the cities because it's yeah. overcrowded, but in, in this village, with the village people to work and to live together, I found so much beauty and they give you almost everything out of their hand and they have, they don't have a lot. They mm -hmm. just share. That's just, uh, wow, overwhelming. So, and do you want to tell a little bit about what Luna, when Luna came into your life, what changed then? Oh, before Luna came, I already had that feeling of, uh, I'm a bit tired of just moving. Mm -hmm. um, because I lived it then eight years and I felt I would like to create somehow a home, but on the other side, I was not super ready to give up uh, this life and to just move back to Germany. So. It, it was a constant, uh, constant talk in my own head. What should I do? What should I do? And uh, yeah, then then Luna came, and as soon as maybe you have a baby, if you're a mom by yourself, maybe you know, you feel a little bit more grounded, and things are changing um, itself without that you have to push. Because as you get the mother, and I'm very, very, as you see, maybe very young and very sportive, and sometimes very male, so yin energy kicked in, and that gave me the feeling of oh, I want to build a, a nest but I was still not really really ready for it because it was not happening <laughs> so when I was four months pregnant uh, I know three months pregnant you know you have sometimes a sickness so 
then Goa was not the right place to be because the heat makes you just in a pregnancy wow destroyed and uh, was uh, everything is dirty you can't cope with that maybe when you're pregnant uh, and then with four months I was like okay I need to go back to Germany I need stability so all this came into my mind it's like I need to do something need to do something so I went back to Germany you couldn't see that I was pregnant and I got my old job back. <laughs> I was super not happy with that, but it was saving my ass, honestly. So, because of this, uh, I uh, was stable and saved me through the first year. And uh, still, when I came back, I was teaching in teacher training and did my own work and was working with that. So, honestly, when I was six months pregnant, uh, almost seven, I almost got a burnout. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Another one. But I was conscious about it. And then I said uh, to my main job, um, I will leave, but you still get money because you're pregnant. I just got, went to the doctor that I have to leave. Um, yeah, and that was uh, what was keeping me more or less uh, safe and healthy. And then when Luna was two months, I went to France. And when she was four months, three months again to France. And then I said, oh, I need to go to India again. <laughs> so when she was four months, I went back to India for three and a half months. But then also um, I felt, okay, it's not, it's not right anymore to be here the, the full season. First you need to create a home and then you can travel. So in my idea was having a home somewhere and from uh, this center you can still move in different direction but you can always come back. And I needed another year, she's one and a half now, and since one month I have a kind of a flat in Germany, which is still a bit tricky. Uh, honestly, I love that grounding feeling and I love that place. But I'm still not ready to live there for 12 months, especially in the winter. So I said to myself, you have that place where you come back to, but you always go for one month there and for one month to India and maybe to another place. And at the moment I can, I can cope with that quite good, but I feel that is not the solution of uh, my life. But I think also at one point it might be that Luna will tell you where to go and not to go. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> and also at some point when she goes to school, well, you have to commit, but it's still four Sometimes. years. Yeah. Um, yeah, also my idea um, vision is to maybe be in Spain or somewhere at the beach in Europe where you have a bit more structure and where you can live out throughout the year. I was thinking about to, to base in India, um, but the problem in Goa is that there's monsoon. And in the monsoon, there's no work and it's six months everybody's resting so what to do you have to move again so this is the this is the, the opposite part, yeah. part of, the, of it but maybe you have that when you move somewhere else not so just try trying to find a place where we both can happy luna and myself but i'm also not pushing it it's just the trust thing just at the moment it is like it is and we see what's coming and do you have any retreats, TTCs, immersions, anything you want to share where they can uh, get to know your person? Of course I have a retreat, with, uh, retreat a teacher training with you. Ah, with <laughs> In <me>. Germany. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Studying. It's fully booked, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's fully booked. <laughs> it's in Düsseldorf. I'm based in Düsseldorf now um, and I give Akko Yoga classes there. Um, but you can find me via my Facebook, which is Jennifer Hessler. <laughs> If there, will any, there will be a link, no there worries. Will be a link. Okay. Um, and I have a retreat in India coming in November, also in North Goa in Mandala, which is one of my uh, favorite places here, and running by um, one of my best friends. And it's an artist place, it's super, super, super beautiful. And I will do it with my mom. I do a lot with my mom these days. And we also teach a workshop in Germany in the summer. Um, yeah, and for Apple Yoga at the moment you can find me in the salon. Yes. Anything else you want to share? <sighs> no. <laughs> I'm just so, you. Super, super happy that uh, I'm able to do the interview with you and you ask me. And um, it's always uh, beautiful to just share and to, to tell what you have experienced by yourself. And I think uh, uh, people get inspired by, by listening to, to that stories, to release. Yeah. And, I mean, this is a, a kind of a mission when you teach yoga or when you when you travel and you yeah you teach whatever you teach. It doesn't have to be necessarily yoga, be anything or healing. For me, it's just really important to have Jenny here because first of all, she is a really, really good friend since a long, long time. And she's actually the reason why I'm also in India. And um, this is what Jenny says, I think just with live sharing experiences, 
you can inspire people and I think it's really really inspiring that you as a single mom you'll still be able to have a job to be happy and to be at a place where you want to be and to travel so sometimes we have these blockages in our minds to tell us we can't do this because now we have a baby because now I'm pregnant because now it's this now I have to do this we have this sometimes I call this these German chains they're like pulling you back but um, one more time, if you trust and accept, the universe will serve you with nice uh, opportunities and everything is possible. And Jenny is a really good example. And um, and you have to get your ass off, honestly. Like, uh, it's also it's a little bit of work. Yeah, it's work. When I was now in January, February in Germany, I was like, I first travel when I have an apartment. But I was almost again burnt out because single mom, working, and I was like, maybe I just stay home and I don't go to Goa because the travel is also exhausting. But then I was like, no, you're going to that German mind, so just just go and do it. Yeah, so it's always a little bit, it's always inner work. And as more inner work you maybe face, um, as more awake you will be afterwards. So that's a, that's a very... And as more your life will change positively. Yeah. We truly believe that. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Have a good day. See you soon. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you.